So as you may know, I'm always interested in discovering new TV shows and of course discovering old ones for the first time. And a friend described the plot of Life of Mars to me and I thought that sounds incredible. So from what I understand, I haven't seen it. This is the first time I'm opening up this box set. Thought it would be a good chance to do this video. But from what I understand it, it's about a policeman or a detective who gets transported back into, I believe, the 80s. That might be corroborated or denied when we have a look at the back of the box. Um, and it just sounded so perfect. So I'm really looking forward to watching it. And the friend who recommended it decided that they would hurry me along with watching it by lending me their series one box set. So this is it here. And I thought we could, we could have a look at it. So see we have the cover and the spine. And here we have the back from the Daily Telegraph. It's the first bit of essential viewing of the year. One which sets the bar so high, others may struggle to match it. This was... Oh gosh, when was this? When is the copyright on this? Uh, I'm trying to read it. 2006. 2006. Okay, so it's taken me 12 years to watch it. In my defence, in 2006, I was only 14. <laughs> so I was not allowed to watch it. Um, where were we? Oh yes. Okay. So it says... You can read this. Sam Tyler, John Sim, is an ambitious young detective determined to keep the streets of 21st century Manchester safe. However, the hunt for a serial killer becomes a personal vendetta when Sam suspects his girlfriend has been kidnapped by the very man he's tracking down. But after a near-fatal near car accident, Sam wakes up, dazed and confused, in 1973, so the 70s, struggling to understand what's real. Has he gone back in time? Is he in a coma? Or has he simply gone insane? His new boss is hard-nosed DCI Gene Hunt, Philip Glenister, a man who gets results by trusting his gut instinct and using a first, a fist-first, questions-later policy. Thrown head-first into this new world, Sam faces some of the hardest cases he has ever known. He has no idea why he is in 1973, but maybe if he can work out the reason, he can get home. <laughs> Just sounds incredible. And we have some bonus features. We have, um, I'm trying to read this through the screen, take a look at the Loman documentary featuring exclusive cast and crew interviews. Audio commentaries, Get Sykes, feature it with production designer Brian Sykes, music of Life on Mars, and Outtakes Reel, which I will definitely be watching once I've watched the actual episodes. So, let's have a look. I, I love... I just love box sets. I love seeing how they've designed them, the anticipation for what the layout is going to be like, what the discs are going to be like, the special features. Just That's the one thing you don't get with Netflix box sets. The actual physical beauty of a box set. Obviously. So we have jumps in there. And we have a look at the one kind of what's on the different Oh, 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 hello. The first name I see is Chris Chibnall. How utterly spectacular. Now that is, oh, I can't wait for that. And we have the, the front here, which is just such a striking image, although I must say, it definitely looks like his foot is hovering there. Uh, actually, it might be hovering, having said that, but it, it, um, it just looks like it should be. Anyway, not the point. So that's our interior. We have Okay, so we have the episodes detailed. We have eight episodes written by Matthew Graham, Matthew Graham, Matthew Graham, Ashley Farrow, Tony Jordan, Matthew Graham and Ashley Farrow, Chris Chibnall, Matthew Graham. Then we have our directors um oh I'm not gonna even attempt to pronounce this name. Somebody can I'm sure phonetically tell me. John McKay, S.J. Clarkson, John Alexander. So the only name there I'm fully familiar with is Chibnall. I assume it's the Chibnall of Broadchurch and now Doctor Who colossal success. Oh wow. 
You should know, by the way, I love a police uniform. That just reminds me of the bell. That makes me so happy. So, moisturizer falling over. Just pull it over for a second. So we have this one. Running time 118 minutes. We have two episodes on a desk. That means each one is approximately an hour and a half. Unless that running time also includes the bonus features. Disc 2 is the same. Fold you over. This side. Yeah. This one's definitely my favourite. I love how that lights up. Is it the same underneath? Or? Oh, it's not. And yet it very cleverly lines up. <laughs> That's, um... I'm very amused by that. And then we have... And there we have the inside. Very much liking the look of these. And I don't want to, I don't want to read the episode details in case there are some spoilers about how the episodes progress. I'm not sure if they can be watched as standalones or if the story arc is so interwoven across all episodes that I would theoretically need to watch them in order, which I will of course be doing. Yeah, I'm loving the colour scheme. Loving the images. Kind of looks like the Ninth Doctor if he shorten his jacket up a little bit. Very dashing. Obviously, John Sim is brilliant and very, very good. So, this one could very quickly become a firm favourite. I was also briefed on the general concept of Ashes to Ashes and desperately, desperately, desperately want to watch that as well. So we'll see how far I get with this one. I might get to the end of the series, the first series, and have to immediately watch the second one. I say that, I don't actually know how many series there are. if you've seen Life on Mars or Ashes to Ashes or you have any other TV show recommendations 